Hello, Jenny Hall here for Ink on 3. Today I'm sharing a slimline card with the beautiful stamp set from Ink on 3. I'll be stamping with fade out no line watercolor ink onto a piece of Bristol cardstock. You could see here that I am stamping this series of images more than once. In fact, I stamped them all three times. I have duplicated and made three sheets of the same images. I just kept them in the misty the entire time. Today I'm going to share my tips for success with no line watercolor. This is a very wonderful and magical ink that Florette has created and it works like magic. It really does. As you can see, as color is applied over the stamped lines, then the image kind of soaks up all of that ink. It's just, a, it's just enough to be able to really tell. And it just amplifies the color in that area so that you can see what you're doing. Now, I like to create images that have a lot of depth and color. So this particular project today is going to have some really bold colors. I want the flowers to stand out tremendously from the background. So I'm using some kind of scary colors. And when I say scary, it's like they're so bold and bright that it's a little scary that I might mess things up because it's too bold. But no worries if you want to follow along and try this method, then I guarantee it'll work great for you. So I'm starting out with the darkest color in the most shadowed recessed area. And then I take the next shade lighter and pull the color by touching the dark color with the tip of the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pen and bringing it out while it's still wet. That ink will not have settled into the Bristol paper yet, and it can be blended and moved around. I like to put the pen directly on the stamped line, and that will just give me a demarcation of where I want to put the color, but it also enhances that stamped line. The stamp line is not lost completely, but it's so well blended in with the rest of the image that it is going to be kind of camouflaged and you can use it as an enhancement. The progression of colors on this particular project, it, I'm going to color them all the same way. It's a dark purple down on the very center and then that mixes with a dark pink and then there is a lighter pink and another pink. And then the last color that I'm going to use to fill in all the empty places is vanilla. And I find myself using more of the vanilla pen lately because when I do watercoloring, it's nice to have a color that's going to blend, but that vanilla also kind of warms things up a bit. So we'll see when we get the vanilla added in. This is the lightest of the pink, and I'm just bringing that pink over to the next shade that's going to sit next to it and moving it in. As I go ahead and color over the stamped lines, you can see that they appear a little easier to see. I stamped all of the images three times with the Misty and the Fade Out ink because it's much easier for me to follow it and see it on the paper. One, one layer of ink will work out just fine, but three is kind of what I need. Now here's a look at that vanilla. It's not white, but it's so close to being just an empty color, but it just brings the warmth and creates what would normally be a very light area. I can't leave the white areas uncolored. They have to have some sort of shade as they would in nature. So that vanilla pen works perfectly. There are some areas of the image that I have not yet touched, and those are the cupped section of the petals. And so now I'm going to touch them all with the vanilla pen and then come back in with the darker of the few pinks 
and then I'm going to go right over that stamped line and then use the vanilla again to kind of spread out that pink. And it's going to fuzz it and maybe make it look a little hazy, a little more natural than just a really sharp line would be. And I'm going to do this around all of the cupped sections of the magnolia. I'm not 100% that this is a magnolia, but this, this type of flower looks like what my mother called a saucer magnolia um, where I grew up in Texas. And that might not have been the official name to the flower, but that's what my mom called it. And so that's kind of, you know, where I lean towards what my mom called it. I'm going to use the same principle with coloring all of the smaller images that are also the flowers. I'm using the same color combination in the same order, taking the dark colors first and pushing them into the shadows. And then you can see that it kind of makes the look of dimension the more that you use that really dark, scary color. Now I'm going to color in the flower buds and I'm going to go ahead and go with pink on these and use some of the colors, but the flower buds, there's not much area for me to fill in, so I'm going to abbreviate it and probably use just three colors and making sure that I touch that vanilla on there so that it carries that same hint of warmth. You may notice that I'm taking the brush and kind of flicking it, and that's because I want to get a fade out from the colors. It's just a, a personal preference of how I add into the very, very small areas. On the section of the greenery, then I'm drawing the lines with a medium green, and then I've gone back and added a thin line of a darker green, and now I'm using yellow green to kind of do that blending that the vanilla was doing on the flowers. The yellow green is a very super warm color and that is going to really help the images be very, very bright. I'm going to make a custom color for the background for these images and it's going to be blue green. So I want all of my greenery that I'm coloring to really stand out and not fade in. I really like to add blue green to the leaves whenever I'm coloring leaves, but in this case, I can't do that. So I'm going with yellow green. And I'm starting in just like I did before on the flowers and adding that darkest down into the shaded areas and then just kind of fading it out. And you can see here the final result of the flowers. I, paint, I painted all three of the panels very similar. I used the same technique. Sometimes I used a little more purple than others. Now there's a tiny little flower center that is included with the beautiful stamp set and it's great because I can go in and I don't have to worry about coloring over the, the flower centers. I can just stamp them. And this would be something that I could do with um, either black or maybe like embossed white. But in this case, I really want that darkness. I want them to be just as concentrated color as possible. I didn't find a stamp that was the same purpose for the smaller images, so I used a Sharpie marker and just went ahead and drew those on so they would match the centers of the larger flowers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I'm using the Bristol paper and an ink blending brush from Trinity Stamps, and this is Peacock Blue Atelier Ink. I absolutely love using Atelier inks for creating backgrounds. This blue one is my favorite color, and there's, I don't know, something so attractive about this color to me. It's just the depth that it builds up, the more and more layers that are blended onto the paper is just absolutely gorgeous. So any chance that I get to use this blue ink, I'm all over it. <laughs> now I'm going to give this a streaky kind of look. Sometimes when I'm ink blending, streaks are unintentional, but today, this particular project, it was definitely intentional. 
But because I want a blue-green background, I'm adding some goddess green right on top of the blue. I'm holding the ink blending brush close to the head because I'm trying to go really fast. I spent so much time painting the flowers that I wanted to get my background done just a little more quickly. I'm using the Distress Sprayer to add some water droplets and pick them up with a cloth. Now that this is a, sim a slimline card and the measurement of the finished card is three and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. So when my card base was created, I cut my paper to seven inches wide and scored it at the three and a half inch mark. In the background, you may notice that the Bristol paper is created from a die. You can see the little stitched marks and that is from a slimline die from Trinity Stamps. I'll be sure to include all of the product links for Ink on 3 and other companies down in the video description. I, I tend to first lay out all of the flowers first to see how I'd like to have them. And I make sure that I have some of the images on and off of the card. And that is because it's going to look a little more natural and pleasing. And I sometimes cringe whenever I cut those flowers off, but it's for the greater good. I know that it's going to complement the design. And see, check it out. It did. It, it worked out okay. Sometimes I save those cut flowers and I'll use them on another project. I'm going to use a sentiment on black paper and I'm using the Ink on 3 Arctic White Ultra Detailed Embossing Powder. This is a great, very fine detailed embossing powder and you can see here that it just takes to the image very nicely. So I am going to clean that off and get all that anti-static off and now I'm going to fussy cut around the beautiful word. Now I left hello on a strip so that I can make it sort of like one unit that's going to stretch across the card here down at the bottom. And so I made sure to leave enough room on the left and on the right so that the word is going to kind of stand out and it's this is going to morph into more like just a sentiment strip or a banner across the card instead of being two separate pieces because it kind of looks like one. I noticed that I missed a spot on the embossing powder with my heat tool. So I'm using a white gel pen to do a, a little quick fix and go over that area so that it looked pretty on this sentiment. And I decided once I have that pin out that I might as well just add a few tiny, tiny, tiny little pinpoint white dots to right beside a few of the black little flower centers. And then I'm going to finish the card off by using some rhinestones from Trinity Stamps. And this is the card. It was so fun to, and relaxing to just sit down and color. I really enjoyed it. I hope that you've enjoyed this project and we would love to hear how you're using fade out ink in your no lime watercoloring. You can subscribe to the Ink on 3 channel and hit that bell if you want to be notified for more videos. Thanks for watching.